Hello everybody, welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for another opportunity he has given to us to be able to fellowship together and break the bread of life together. And the bread of life will break. You and I know regularly on this channel is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible said in 1 John in chapter 1, he said, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. And Jesus, speaking as God-man in the book of John chapter 4, he said, God is a spirit and he seeks for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And then after the death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus from the dead, Paul came speaking by the Holy Ghost. And Paul said, I got to remove this thing, glory be to God. And Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, he said, we born again believers in Christ Jesus. We are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and put no confidence at all in the flesh. Now what all of that means is that born again believers in Christ Jesus are the fulfillment of the Father's desire to have spirit worshippers. All right, I want to welcome you to this special edition um, of our communion service. Now, wherever you are watching from all over the world, where, where you're, whether you're in Canada right now, you're in America, in, um, you're in UK, in London, in anywhere in Europe, Germany, anywhere, in the Balkans, or you're in Dubai, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Australia, you know, wherever you're watching from, even in China, in South Africa, in Kenya, Ghana, anywhere in Nigeria, wherever you're watching from i need you to get ready to be part of this communion service please take a moment real quick do that real quick uh do that real quick uh, go get yourself um, a drink and a slice of bread if you have if you don't have coca-cola or drink in the house right now wherever you are don't worry about it just get even if it's a cup of water you know if it's a cup of water go get it you know and if you don't have bread, if you have biscuit with you right there, get it. Even if it's cake, just get a piece of something. Bread, cake, you know, you know and, and bring, it, bring them together. Right now, go ahead and do that. Everybody, go ahead. I'm going to wait for you to do that real quick. Because we're going to be taking communion together. Amen. Now, because this is the first time we're doing this on my, on my network, um, I want to take some time, maybe in the next 30 to 35 minutes, to explain something about the communion, you know, to us as believers. Because a lot of Christians have been so misinformed about communion. You know, there are some Christians that even believe that you shouldn't take communion at all. You know, somebody sent me a message um, and say you know send me because they saw the advert i put on the on the internet for our communion service right now you know and somebody saw it and wrote something on it he said communion i'm surprised i'm like what are you surprised about you know unfortunately a lot of people have been so misinformed and they've become so narrow-minded their mind is so narrow that it's only what their eyes can see that they believe you know, if they can't see it, yet it is true, they won't believe it. So you see, these are indirect unbelievers. So depending on who you are listening to, you know, your, your mind will be functioning in according to that direction. Because you know it or not, every one of our knowledge is influenced by a teacher. Are you seeing that? So Paul said to Timothy, you know the person you have learned these things from. You know? You know, so you have to know who you are learning these things from. Don't learn truth from a man who is so narrow-minded and whose theology is complicated and just thinks that, uh, you know, creating controversy makes them popular. You know, people... Will give attention to them. I, I don't want to get into in, involved with in all of my gospel is simply the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and my teaching is simply Jesus. Away from controversy, I don't need to use controversy to get so popular, you know, and all that. So, because of 
because this is our first time, we're going to be having this communion together like this. I like to do a quick teaching on communion, you know, for us to know, you know, because um, I know that a, a, a lot of people, especially these grace followers, grace preachers, quote unquote, you know, have messed up a lot of things. They've messed up so many things. They've abused, not just messed up, they've abused a lot of things, you know, and gradually they are drifting into a dangerous territory, ungodly territory. And unfortunately, they are carrying a lot of young people, you know, with them. But majority of them are going to wake up. I trust the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus is going to help them to wake up, realize the truth, and, you know, come back. You see, most of these, like I said, most of these grace preachers, you know, do not believe in taking communion. You know, they've preached against taking communion. You know, um, as much as I do not agree with their teaching, I like to say as well that you should not, because that's one thing I have made as my stand, you should not make these emblems, the bread or the drink, or maybe it's biscuit you have or something, whatever it is. If we want to take communion like this, do not make the emblem an idol. Are you seeing that? Don't turn it into an idol. Don't turn the emblems into an idol. But using emblem as symbol for communion is scriptural in the New Testament. As a matter of fact, I like to say it is biblical. It is, it is told, instructed the new creation to do so. So let's start with that. All right? Glory be to God. Um, let's start first of all. With First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse um, um, verse twenty six, you know, I, I think I need to say this first of all. Very important. Um, there is nothing like holy communion, holy H O L Y in the Bible. You can't find holy attached to communion in the Bible. You know, so that's part of where a lot of people are confused that there is nothing like. Holy communion in the Bible. Of course, there is not. There's nothing like that. You know, I agree. You know, but I, I need you to see this. Uh, so the word holy is not there. Communion. You can't find it in the Bible. You know, so I wrote here. I said the word holy is what is confusing most people. Since it is not found in the Bible, though the word holy communion is not in the Bible, the word communion is in the Bible. Communion is in the Bible. And the communion we take is described as the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. Please note this. The communion we take, it is described in the Bible as the blood, as the body and the blood of Christ. Watch. In 1 Corinthians, uh, I think let's start with um, chapter 10 verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16. You know, I want to debunk all these myths about don't take any emblem, don't near these things. You know, it's because these people are narrow minded, you know, and they can't see. They can't see beyond their pride. They can't see beyond their pride. So, watch this. You will see that after today, you will begin to do what we're doing. We will take these emblems. Watch this. Let me use this thing my son made for me. He said, the cup of blessing, which we believers born again christian bless the cup of blessing that we bless are you seeing that who bless it it is the believers i'm going to bless this one right now before we partake of it he said is it not the communion of the blood of christ so you see this thing that we're going to bless in a while for us to take as we bless it it becomes supernaturally transformed into the blood of christ it's an emblem yes but it's going to be torn by our invoking blessing. Are you seeing that? Glory be to God. He said, the bread. Ooh, Amanaya, the bread which we break. This is not a spiritual bread. This is a physical bread we break. We have broken the bread. Are you seeing that? I've broken it. The bread is broken. He said, the bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So you see, the body of Christ is clearly spoken of a way apart from 
this broken bread. The body of Christ is spiritual. Are you seeing that? Spiritual body. He said, but we partake of the body of Christ when we also break a physical bread and put the blessing of, it, of communion on it in Jesus' name. Are you seeing it? So, both the bread and the cup, the Bible said they are both physical. Look at it. I didn't say it. Look at it. They are physical emblems. Physical emblems. He said the cup and the bread. Woo! I'm a lawyer. Don't punish ignorance. See, Bible don't worry me. Are you seeing him? He said, but the cup and the bread, which we break, not the one that was broken on the physical body of Jesus. The one we we break. We, the one we we break. We we the church, the body of Christ. The one that like the one I'm going to break now. So anybody that preaches to you that to take these two emblems as a symbol of our communion with the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ, that person is ignoramus. That person is an ignorant person. And I say that without apology because the scripture is very clear. You can argue with my opinion. That's why my opinion is not needed. My opinion is irrelevant. I don't have time for my opinion. But the scripture is how I think. Look at it. The cup of blessing which we, the church, body of Christ, bless. The cup, the cup. We bless the cup. Woo! Hallelujah. He said, when we bless it, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? After we bless it, you see, this is an ordinary cup, and the drink inside is an ordinary drink. But as soon as we invoke the blessing of Christ on it, it becomes the blood of Christ. Woo! How God does that is not my responsibility. It is for me to believe that it is so. Are you seeing that? He said, the bread which we break, the bread which we break, we are the one who, break, who, who, breaks, who breaks the bread. We break the bread. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Because we are not the one who broke the body of Jesus. The physical body of Christ was broken and battered on the streets of Jerusalem. Are you seeing that? So we symbolize, we demonstrate that broken body of Jesus by breaking bread. Woo! I got that. I was born for this thing. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, 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 I was born for this truth. Glory, glory be to God. So anybody who preaches to you that you don't have to have these two emblems, the cup and the bread, that person does not know what he or she is talking about. The person is anti-communion, holy communion. Are you seeing that? So, why do we call it holy communion? Very important. You must understand. I wrote here. Let me read. Why do we call this thing holy communion? Not that we bless the cup. We break the bread. Are you, you, I need you to note that. We are the one who bless the cup. Not the Holy Ghost. Not Jesus. Not the Father. We, the church. As we bless the cup. The Holy Ghost turns it supernaturally before Almighty God, before God our Father, into the blood of Christ. And as we break the bread, acknowledging Jesus, in Jesus' name, the Holy Ghost turns it into the broken body of Christ. So, watch this. We, we bless the cup, break the bread in reverence. To our king our savior our lord jesus christ so because we reverence jesus we are mindful of jesus our thought and mind is jesus as we partake of these two i wrote here look at what i wrote here i said Whoo! i said note we are the ones who both bless the communion to take it but since we are taking it as a as communion of the body of christ and the blood of christ we are, we do we do it out of reverence 
for the Lord Jesus. That is why we call it holy. So I say this thing now. Right now, it's not holy. It's just ordinary cup. It's just ordinary bread. But once we invoke blessing in the name of Jesus on it, on both, it becomes holy. It becomes set aside. The word holy means set aside. It becomes set, set aside. It becomes set apart. So it becomes set apart as an instrument of, of the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ. Are you seeing that? It's like saying, have you heard, I'm sure you have done it yourself. Have you heard somebody pray? In the precious name of Jesus. There is no scripture that says you must add precious to the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, in Philippians chapter 2, he said, at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. It's supposed to be Jesus. Don't put precious. Don't put wonderful. Don't put mighty, powerful. Don't put all of that. You should just say Jesus. But you see, we say precious name of Jesus. You know why we put the word precious? You know why we put the word mighty name of Jesus? Glorious name of Jesus. You know why? Because of the person that we are acknowledging. We are referring to. So, consciously, there is a reverence in our heart for Jesus. Are you seeing that? We, re we, are re we reverence the, the name Biera. So because of the reverence we have for the name Biera, that's why we add precious name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. The Bible didn't say you should ever use the mighty name of Jesus, precious name of Jesus, the glorious name of Jesus. He said at the name of Jesus. You should just use the name of Jesus. Are you seeing that? Glory be to God. I'm looking at time because I, I want to rush this thing and then we'll take this communion to the glory of God. See, understanding is flowing here. All right, watch this. So you have to unlearn the narrow-minded teaching that grace preachers have flooded you with. Otherwise, you will be denying yourself a precious opportunity, a glorious opportunity, a blessed opportunity. That is presented to us in Christ Jesus. Wow. Thank you, precious Father. All right. Let's run along. In First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-six. Put please, put First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-six. So remember, this is the drink is different from the spiritual blood. The bread is different. From the spiritual body. But they symbolize them. And once we invoke blessing on them. They become exact blood and body of Christ. Thank you precious father. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> but don't make idol of them. I've been saying that. You know some people. They now start carrying. Uh, uh, whether bread or biscuit or drink in their purse. In their bag, in their car, they carry it about, taking the thing up and down, say, I'm taking uh, the miracle meal, I'm taking the holy No, no, no. That's an idol. That you, 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 you have turned into an idol. That's not what the Bible says, you know. But we do it often, anyway, you know. All right. So let's continue. Remember in, um, what we have read before. So now let's look at um, 1 Corinthians 11 26. Watch this. He said, For as often, as you eat. You see, if this thing, if the communion is not physical bread, why are we physically eating it? As often as you eat this bread. So we are going to eat the bread. Are you seeing that? Uh, he said, and as often as you drink the cup. So it is not a spiritual cup. It's a physical cup. As well. Where is Roxy now? Yay! I know that if Roxy was here, this thing would be shocking Roxy. Uh, where? Are you seeing Bible? He, he said, look, these things are physical. And they are administered physically. And as we are administering it physically, they have spiritual impact that they carry. Glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, in 1987, when I first started pastoring, 1987, that's about how many years ago now? That's 30, 30 something years ago. 
Huh? 33 years ago. I've been pastoring since 1987. Some were not even born here. They were not born again then. You know? Some of these people were not born again. That are just jumping about and, you know, and they want to determine that their theology, you know, is what Christianity is. Without really understanding and knowing what they are talking about. You know, I'm very proud and arrogant. Very unfortunate. I remember in 1987, you know, that time there were no churches like this. There were no churches everywhere like this. A couple of my church members were students. Not a couple. majority of them were students. Uh, and somehow, many of them were students of uh, Ekboma, University of Ekboma. You know? And um, University of Lagos. I mean, you didn't lag. Yeah. You know, Lagos State University. I, you don't know Unilag. Which one is uh, that again? Uh, that's the um, University of Lagos. You know, and then other places. One time, I taught on communion, holy communion. I taught on. I mean, I did a sound teaching on it. You know, and it's, it's part of my note that I went to dig out to be teaching again. I mean, as at that time, I've taught this thing like this. You know, so I had to go and dig out part of my note to, to reteach it now. So you see that this is not something I just dabble into. You know, and then I'm running uh, kitty kitty, kata kata. You know, because I want to uh, 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 um, mingle with the big boys. <laughs> no, no, no. So I remember when school resumed, most of them that were members of the fellowship that were not in Lagos moved back to Ekboma. They went back to school. You know? So the teaching, and after the teaching, I remember we broke bread, we took the cup, and we blessed it, and we drank. So everybody went back. You know? I remember when they got to school, something happened. So they rushed back to Lagos to come and tell me. You know? They, they got a couple of guys born again in the university. University of Ekboma there. I mean, these guys just went on rampage preaching Jesus to people, getting people born again, you know, so the thing kept growing and growing and growing, so it got to a point, they got about, they, they were about 50 of them, so they decided to take Holy Communion, you know, so they took bread, they, they, did, they just took a, a whole loaf, a lo you know, a whole loaf of bread, put it on the table, and then they brought Coca-Cola bottle, you know, a bottle of Coca-Cola, put it there, you know, and then they began to worship God. They began to worship. They began to worship. You know, before their eyes, all 50 of them, all 50 of them, I'm not joking. These are people that just got born again. They saw a ladder from the roof. A ladder came down straight on the table where the two emblems were, the bread and the Coca-Cola. And then an angel climbed the ladder down, took the bread and the coke, and went up. Went back up. Few seconds later, the angel came down with the bread and the cup, and then said to them, and with Coca-Cola, and said to them, he said, this is the body of Christ, and this is the blood of Christ. The, the place was filled with such a heavy presence of God, the anointing was so strong, people were getting slain without anybody touching them. They were all lying down flat on the floor. And for, for it not to look like an illusion that somebody talked about, all 50 of them saw it. The Lord opened the eyes of all 50 of them. You need to see how these young men and women pack themselves and fill the whole bus. Or two buses, rather, and came back down to Lagos with excitement to come and tell me their experience in taking Holy Communion. Look, if you become, if you allow somebody to use teaching to narrow your mind, you will be the worst for it. If you allow them to use teaching to narrow your mind, and you think you become a governor to Jesus Christ to the Holy Ghost. You will be the worst for it. I'm telling you. Are you seeing it? 
Now, quickly, before I go any further, because of time, so that we can take, we can partake of this thing, you know. Jesus, Amanaya, Agalabotagaya. You know, I can do a two week teaching on this, but I'm trying to jump and jump some things because of time, so I don't burn, uh, I don't waste the time, you know, I don't burn out the time, you know. In Luke 22, verses 13 to 14, Luke 22, you know the story. The story is about a period in Israel that comes once in a year and it's called the time of the Passover. The time of the Passover. The time of the Passover had come close. So Jesus was looking for where he would sit with his disciples to take the Passover with them. You know, remember, Jesus was living under the old covenant. While he was still physically here, he was still living under the old testament. He couldn't live in the new testament because the new testament had not come into effect. The new testament must come by the shedding of blood and the death of a testator. So there was no death, no blood shed. So the only testament that was available was the old testament. And under the old testament, the Passover is a must. And the reason for the Passover is to point, to define, to declare, to say to the people, a savior is coming. Somebody is coming that will actually shed his blood, shed his blood and die for the sin of mankind. But the person has not come yet. So the purpose of the Passover is to point to the Savior, the future Savior, the person that is coming to be a Savior. Are you seeing that? So here is the Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He has come. Woo! Glory be to God. And now the Old Testament is about to go away. It's about to be ended. The Old Testament was about to be ended. So before it ends, Jesus decided to teach experiential knowledge to his disciples about the Passover and what it was pointing to that has come. So watch this. Hey, see Bible. Honestly, this thing they do me like I smoke something. In Luke 22, the Bible said in verse 13, let me use this thing, my son made for me. He said, and they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Are you seeing it? So Jesus was going to now take the Passover with his disciples. Are you seeing that? Glory be to God. But he had another agenda at the back of his mind. Because he just didn't want to say it to them without showing the disciples. So what did Jesus do? Verse 14. Please put verse 14. 14 says, and when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Are you seeing that? They sat, they sat down with him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Alright. Let's take, please drop down because of time. Verse 19. I'll go to verse 17. Let's start from verse 17 because of time. Because I'm trying to make sure I don't take too much. I, I want to put in so many within a short period. Or maybe we should just go on from that 15. I think I can rush it. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Woo! Before I suffer. Before I, I go to demonstrate. What this Passover has been pointing to since. Before I go to show it, to fulfill it. I'm about to fulfill what the Passover has been pointing to. Are you seeing what Jesus is saying? Verse 16. Daddy, quickly, verse 16. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For I say unto you, I will not anymore eat thereof until, the, until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. It, <laughs> oh, Jesus, I wish I had time. Quickly, verse 17. He said, and he took the cup. Jesus now took the cup and gave thanks and said, take, take this and divide it among yourselves. Look, watch you. Share it among yourselves. Next verse. He said, for I say unto you, I will not drink of this cup, of this fruit, of the vine, until the kingdom of God shall come. Verse 19. Quickly, please. Watch. Just follow it. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body. As often as you watch, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Ooh, 
Amayana, Amayana, Amayana. Watch, there's something I want to show you. This is after Jesus had finished the Passover with them. After they had eaten the supper. After eating the supper, which is the Passover. Because the Passover was the supper. Are you hearing this? What, what, just watch. Let me show you something. Go to verse 20. Look at verse 20. Luke chapter 22. Likewise also, the cup after supper, after supper, Jesus now, he allowed them to take the supper fair. They had finished the supper. The supper is the Passover. Passover means a savior is coming. He's pointing to a savior. Showing people that there's a need for a savior that will come and save us eternally. Forever. Alright? After Jesus had partaken of this Passover, remember that he himself is living under the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant. So he must take the Passover. So he took the Passover with them. After the Passover, the Bible said, likewise also, he took the cup after supper, after Passover, saying, watch, after they had done the Passover, Jesus is now saying, this cup that I'm giving you now is the New Testament. I believe in my blood which is shed for you remember he has not he was yet to shed the blood but he's trying to tell his disciples look today is the end of the passover because what the passover is pointing to the savior is pointing to i'm the one i've come i'm here so after they had eaten the passover the supper he now took the cup he said, take this cup. Take this one. Because the New Testament is still starting. The Old Testament is vanishing with the Passover. The reality is here. I am the reality. He said, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. My own blood. My own life. My life. Not the life of the animal anymore. Because the Passover is the life of the animal. Under the Old Testament. He said, but this one is in my blood. Which is shed for you. I'm going to shed my blood for everybody. For the sin of the world. You know, imagine being one of the disciples. As at that time, they are like, oh my God. What is he saying? Does that mean the Passover is over? Woo! There will be no more Passover. We don't need to eat Passover again. Jesus said yes. But, I am not saying you should not gather like this anymore. Oh, where is Roxin now? Somebody should dust me because this thing is doing me like I smoke something. God punish the devil. You see, when they finished taking the Passover, the supper, Jesus now began the process of communion, the New Testament, defining the cup and the broken bread, body, which is the bread. But he did not tell them not to gather like that anymore. Jesus didn't say, don't ever gather like this again and take this cup and this bread. No, 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 no. You know what he said? Let me show you what he said. Go to verse 19. God punished the devil. Look at what he told them. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto his disciples, that's unto them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Are you seeing that? This do in remembrance of me. So Jesus is telling his disciples, every time you come together now, don't come together for Passover. No. Come together to take the cup and break the bread to share, to take among yourself to remember me. This time around, when you do it, do it to remember me. So Holy Communion is our way of remembering that he died for us, but he is alive. He died for us. Yet he's alive. Agadaya. Jesus wants to be the, uh, uh, Jesus wants to constantly be remembered. He wants us to call him to active consciousness. Jesus wants his thought 
the thought of him to fill our mind and our heart. He said, do it. Keep doing it. As often as you do it. Do it. He said, he took, this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave to his disciples, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this. The way he broke it. That's what he said you should do it. He told his disciples, do it in remembrance. So anytime we break it now, we are remembering Jesus. Woo! Are you seeing it? We are remembering Jesus. Glory be to God. <laughs> so anybody who preached to you that you should not take Holy Communion by way of the emblems, that person has misled you. Mata, mata. That person has spoken by the devil and has misled you. You are denying Jesus' his remembrance. You are a rebel against Jesus. Denying him his remembrance. He wants to be actively remembered. Remember me. Oh... How difficult can that be? Somebody gave his own life, died for us. He said, but as I died for you, you that I died for, that you are going to be alive, you will receive life. Remember me. Please, remember me. Don't forget me. And how did he say they should remember him? Watch. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body. That bread that he broke. He broke the bread and gave them. He shared it to them. He said, this bread is the bread that is broken for you. He said, the way I broke it and gave you. Do this to remember me. This is how I want you to be remembering me. Keep breaking bread. Remembering me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love Jesus. We are remembering Jesus right now. Glory be to God. Glory. Lord Jesus, we love you and we remember you. We remember you, Jesus. So he said, uh, number two, he said, do this. Do it. Break bread. Take the cup. Jesus said, do it. Do it. Do this. Do this. We're not just supposed to remember him. He said, if we want to remember him, we should do this. What are we supposed to do? Break the bread. Take the cup. Physical cup. Physical bread. Woo! Don't rush Bible. Do this. Do this. Woo! Do this. Do it. Do this. Do this too. So we're about to do this. Yeah. To remember him. He knows we can remember him by faith. We can remember him by speaking in tongues. We can remember him by preaching, by singing, by reading Bible. We can remember him through meditation. But he said, do this, do this one. If you want to remember me, do this one. This is part of it. Use this one as well. Practice this one as well. Do it. <laughs> so it's not a matter of my choice. It's not what I want. It's what he wants. That this is what he wants it. Jesus wants this thing. He wants this bread. He wants this cup. He wants the two of them. As a means of my remember, as a means of my rem remembering him. He wants it. Now, finally, let me close with this because my time is gone. Let me let me I gotta stop here, but let me just say this to you. While Jesus was doing and teaching his disciples this truth. You see, I have, I have depth of this thing to teach. But it's just that time. I, I'm constrained by time. So don't think that this is everything. You know, While Jesus was teaching his disciples this truth in the book of Luke, at the upper room, are you seeing what I'm saying? Somebody was not there with them. There was a man that was not there with them. Who is this man? His name is called Saul of Tarsus. That eventually became Apostle Paul. He was not there with them. So, he had no idea what happened there. But here is Paul. 
He's born again. He's been commissioned and sent forth with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So Paul is now writing to the church at Corinth. Look at what Paul said. This is dangerous. I feel the anointing here already. My God in heaven. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in verse 23, watch this. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. Look at what, this is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. He said, for I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. This guy was not there. Paul was not there when Jesus practiced communion, holy communion with his disciples. After the supper, after the Passover, Jesus took the bread and broke it. Paul was not there. He was not physically there with them. But guess what Paul said? Look at what he said. This is not my opinion. For I have received of the Lord. Jesus actually came to Paul. Woo! And opened both the spiritual and physical understanding of Paul into what he did with his disciples in that upper room. Paul had a first hand revelation, knowledge, and experience of what Jesus practiced with the apostles in that place. He said, For I received of the Lord. Nobody taught me what I what I taught you. Jesus came and taught it to me. He imparted it to me. Are you seeing this? The night he was to be betrayed, he took the bread. He took the bread. Paul said, nobody taught me this thing. Don't you get it? They were physically there with him. But he took me in the realm of the spirit into that occasion. He took me into that upper room. And I sat down with them in the realm of the spirit there. And I saw first hand what he told them. He taught them. The same thing he communicated to me by the impact of the spirit. Woo! Verse 24. Watch this. He says, And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread. He broke the bread. This is Paul. He's seeing in the realm of his spirit what Jesus did there at that upper room. In the realm of his spirit. His spirit and Jesus is explaining it to him. Hey, see divine communication. <laughs> and said, Take it. This is my body which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance. He still told Paul. He said, Paul, I told them, do it. So Paul, I'm telling you, you to do it. Take the bread, break it, take the cup, and drink. If you break the, eat the bread, and drink the cup, do it in remembrance of me. So do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do. Emphasis. Emphasis. Yes. So Jesus told Paul, do this, you to do it. I told them to do it, you to do it. Do it. Do this, do this. Zogoboda, your dog. So Paul now taught the church at Corinth what was taught and impacted into him by the Lord Jesus. <laughs> But I does it here, does so. Verse 25. At the same manner, also, he took the cup. At the same manner, also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament. Oh, yeah. Everything Jesus told the disciples in the upper room there, he told Paul the same thing. Paul said, Peter, they didn't teach me this thing. James didn't teach me this thing. John didn't teach me this thing. Jesus himself taught me the thing I delivered to you, that I taught you. The thing I taught you, the Lord Jesus taught it to me. And he said to me, this, do, do this thing. Do it. Paul, do it. Do this thing. Do it. Break bread. Paul, break bread. Paul, take cup. <laughs> Are you 
Ramanayada 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 is for us to have a means to call Jesus to active consciousness to remember him. So he told Paul too. Look at what he told Paul in verse 26. Maybe I have to stop here so that we can take the communion. He said, For as often as you eat this bread, physical bread, and drink this cup, physical cup, he said, You do show the lost death until he come. You are remembering that he died for you. You see him. Eh? Hear me, everybody. Especially ministers. There are two symbols that are permitted as a practice in the New Covenant, in the New Testament. There are two symbols. These two symbols are not understood by these so-called grace preachers. And the devil is just use, trying to use them to fight these symbols as delivered by the Lord. Two symbols. The first one is this Holy Communion. The Holy Communion is a sign by which we show that Jesus died for us. We call him to active remember, consciousness. We remember him and his death for us. The second symbol of the, of the New Testament is Titan. Some people get angry now. Because they think that they are God and Savior. They think they are master of, they know everything. They are, they are jack of all trades. You are the only person that know all of the Bible. I hear you. Very stingy people. It's because they don't want to give. They say, no, there's nothing like Titan in the New Testament. You should just give. God just wanted to give. I said, give, give, give. There's nowhere the Bible says you should tithe. Where did he say you should not tithe? In Hebrews chapter 7, when tithe was spoken about, he said, we give tithe because he receives it up there to show that he liveth, ever liveth, to receive it. So tithe is a sign, is our own demonstration of faith that our Redeemer, our Savior, our King is alive. We take Holy Communion to show that he died. We give tithe to show that he's alive because he receives it up there. Glory be to God. I don't care whether somebody is angry or is not angry. No, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm talking to those of you that the Lord sent me to. Don't follow all these people. Who are, majority of these grace people, they are very stingy. They've been struggling with giving all their lives. So when they hear, when they heard about the gospel, uh, the message of grace, and then how these so-called teachers pull out giving from it, you know, it makes them happy. Because they are so selfish. And go and look at them. Majority of them are the ones struggling financially. The people who hate to give. They are so struggling. They are struggling heavily. Because the promise. The promise is made available. Not only to them who are of faith. Even to them who are of the law. That's what Paul said in the book of Galatians. It's available to everybody. It's available to everybody. I wish I can remember that scripture. In, I think it's Galatians chapter 2 or something. I can't remember. Uh, or is it chapter 2 or chapter 3? You know? Uh, what, what did that scripture say? say? Um, I think the inheritance. You know? It's not the debt of, the, of the law, but of faith also. You know, you need to put King James so that we used to know whether you know, because I can still remember it. Uh, no, 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 it, it's somewhere here, sir. You know, um, the promise, you know, not promise, the promise uh, is guaranteed. You know, I, I maybe NLT shows guarantee, you know, something like that. You know, so wow, I, I wish I can remember that you know scripture offered. <laughs> you know, this teaching about communion is so strong in my heart that my mind is not thinking, you know, outside of it at all. You know, so so it is godly, but the truth is this you must not make idol of the bread and of the cup. Don't make idol of it. Don't make an idol of it. 
for if they which be of the law be here, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Something like this, but there's another one. Um, I think verse 16 of this Romans 4, you know, also. Uh, yeah, verse 16. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit, and thank you, Daddy. Therefore, it is of faith. Are you seeing it? That it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all. The promise is sure to all, it's guaranteed to everybody, to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law. That means the people who are practicing the law, the promise is still available to them. That's why you see that those who are under the law, they are not struggling with communion, taking holy communion, so they are benefiting, they are enjoying the benefit of the communion. But those who are say, quote unquote, say they are living under grace and then they are fighting taking holy communion, they are exempting themselves. The people who are living under the law are giving tight and they are, they are prospering, they are doing well. I don't care what you think, they are doing well. They are doing well. Every tighter that is practicing the law or trying to live by the law that does not even know about the message of grace yet and they are teaching and preaching and practicing tithing under the law. They are doing far better. Far better. Majority of these young boys and girls who say they are preaching law, or oh, uh, grace, grace. Look at them. Their church is down. You know, about some of them, their churches have closed up. Some of them are struggling financial, financially. They are going into doing all kinds of trade and because their heart, and their faith, God cannot believe God for such things that if they give 10% or 20% or 50%, whatever percentage, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Just give. They, they don't believe if they give, God will bless them back. So they are cut off. You know, one of them, one of them preached the other day. He said, he said, uh, God, because you give money does not mean God will give you money. That's rubbish. Utter nonsense. What are you talking about? Anyway, I'm not here to preach about that today. Maybe next time. We'll do it next time. You know, these people just... They're just puffed up over nothing. Over nothing. Without looking at the scripture. The Bible said the promise. Look at it. The promise might be sure to all the seed. Not only to that which is of the law. But to that also which is of faith. So the, the even those living under the law. The promise is working for them. Huh. Anyway, let's leave that to <laughs> and go. See time. But having said all of that, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are going to take communion right now. So get ready. Get your bread ready. Get your drink, your cup. Call your family members. Call your friends. Anybody around you, call them. I have my people here with me. You know, we're going to take this communion and the benefit, the blessedness of it, because this is the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for us, that we may have life. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible said he was delivered for our offenses. He was raised for our justification. He was delivered for our offenses. He said Jesus gave himself to deliver us from all sin. As a sacrifice. He gave himself as a sacrifice. Let's just thank him, everybody. Wherever you are, Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the death of Jesus. Thank you for his sacrifice on the cross. Father, thank you because Jesus gave up all of his privileges to take on the form of a man, to die for me, to die for us, to die for our mistakes, to die for our sins, to die for our iniquity. Yea, his body was beaten, battered, broken, and pieces that by his stripes we may be healed. Thank you, Father, for the precious blood of Jesus that keeps speaking better things than the blood of Abel. We call you to active consciousness as we remember you right now, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We know we can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough. But we are approaching the Holy Communion together globally right now to prove our love, our appreciation, our thanks to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for, you know, it is written that you were wounded for our transgressions. 
bruise for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid on you. And with your stripes, Lord Jesus, we are healed. I come against every sickness. Whatever the sickness, as we partake of this table right now, we, as we remember the Lord Jesus, I come against every sickness. I curse it with the root. I command it to die in the name of Jesus. Because we remember that Jesus paid the price already. He paid the price already. And because of the blood, I seize the voice of the accuser of our brethren. The blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Father. As we approach this table right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Please, everybody, I bless the bread. If you have your bread there, if you have your cup there, stretch your hand towards it. You know, I bless the bread and I bless the cup right now. I pray in the name of Jesus that all over the world, even as we do right here, the bread is blessed and sanctified, set aside. The, the cup has become the blood of Jesus. This bread has become the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because it will minister life, health, soundness, and protection to us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, let's approach it with faith. That this is the blood. And this is the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Alright. You will come and take. So share with your people that are around you there. Thank you Lord Jesus. Quickly come. Everybody. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Everybody. Thank you Lord Jesus. I see I have one left. So I have to tell you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, precious Father. So then he took the cup, gave thanks, and then gave it. Glory be to God. I love Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the cup. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood that was shed. For the remission of our sins. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. According to the riches of his, of his, glory, of his grace. Thank you precious father. In Jesus name. Thank you father. We cannot be accused. The wicked one has no hold on us. Because of the blood. Hallelujah. The blood speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, precious Father. Abba. With whom is no variableness, neither the shadow of Tony. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory be to God. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I sense the anointing here very strongly. Whatever the infirmity, whatever the occasion that is contrary to the blessings of God in Christ Jesus, is gone right now. In the name of Jesus, I command every womb to open. You thrust. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Every womb to conceive. I speak to every eye clear. Brain, come back to order. I come against paralysis. Disappear. You spirit of death. I bind you in Jesus name. Father I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. Demonic oppression in every house. Every compound. I bind you now. I command you go out. In the name of Jesus. I release the peace of our God. Peace in the name of Jesus. Because of what Jesus has done. Peace in the name of Jesus. Because of what Jesus has done. Peace in the name of Jesus. Because of what Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth has done. I sense release, release. There's a release. Glory be to God. There's a release. Thank you, precious Father. There's a release. Be released in the name of Jesus. I command release. Release in the atmosphere. Release. Financial release. This money that is expected to take place, to have been paid, to have been released. I command this money to be released. Let the money be released. Let the money be released. The money be released now in the name of Jesus. I ask, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, those that want to travel, I, your travel arrangement is clear. Your way is made. Aya, 
whatever plans you were planning, I bless it in the name of Jesus. There is a release. There is a release. There is a release. I'm telling you, this is a prophetic word in my spirit. There is a release in the name of Jesus. There is a financial release. There is a release concerning journey. Make, people making journey. It is done in the name of Jesus. Release in the name of Jesus. Release in the name of Jesus. Release in the name of Jesus. There's a release. There's a freedom. Go free in the name of Jesus. It is released for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. You know, we will not close this, fel this fellowship right now without asking you to give. We will not close this broadcast without giving you opportunity to give. So I'm going to give you opportunity to give right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please, join us financially. You know, and be an a financial encouragement to us. You know, I did ask January this year for people to give hundred dollars a month for the next seven months. And those of you that have been doing it, thank you. The Lord bless and keep you in Jesus' name. If you have not done it, you are not part of it. Please join. I need you financially to help me preach the truth of the gospel of Christ. I am not into controversy. I don't, I don't have time for that. It's not a calling for me. I don't do co co controversial thing because I want to be popular. I want the thing to go viral. No, 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 no. It's not because everybody is going to give account of what they are teaching. You know, so I'm very conscious of that. So I don't go into, double into all kinds of those, uh, this thing. No, no, no. You know, I'm building with gold in Jesus' name by the help of the Holy Ghost. So, I need you financially. Take, right now, do it. Use your phone, your laptop, your iPad. Do financial transfer. Do it right now. Give offering. You know, even as we have taken communion now, do it in Jesus' name. You know, wherever you are, whether you are in Nigeria or outside of Nigeria, all over the world, do it right now. You can, if you are in Nigeria, you can use our Zenith Bank, 1001488167. Or you can use our Access Bank, 14. Three 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 seven three five seven four, or you can use Guarantee Trust Bank zero zero one six eight six four one two one. But if you are outside of Nigeria, you are in South Africa, Kenya, Ghana, Canada, USA, or you are in the Balkans, you are in UK, in London, or you are in Germany, Holland, you know Poland, wherever you are, or maybe you are in Australia, Qatar, Dubai. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, or Turkey, or in China, wherever you are, you can use our international giving platform to help us. You know, Guaranteed Trust Bank. It's, the SWIFT code is GTBINGLA. And the US dollar account is 001-686-4145. The Great British Pound account is 001-686-4169. And then the euro is 001-686-4179. You know, do it. You know, give. Even as we have taken communion right now, give. Let the Lord use you to give. You know, don't wait and say, well, Apostle James, ABJ is not talking to me. He's talking to somebody else. No, I'm talking to you. And I trust the Lord Jesus to use you in Jesus' precious name. Father, thank you for everyone giving. Bless and multiply every seed so in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I love you until I see you on the next episode um, of Experience Jesus with AVJ. Guess what I'm about to do? I am signing out. God bless you. Bye-bye.